how do you see um, the future of NGO sector worldwide in near future? Because uh, in Europe, as we based in Europe, we know the situation, what's happening, you know, from LGBT rights to populism that's in different, you know, European countries happening. And there's NGO groups that try to like, uh, like fight for pe- unprotected people groups. Uh, but what do you see? How do you see the future of NGO sector worldwide? Because it's uh, huge. Yes, like, it is <laughs> huge. So, you know, we could, we could uh, work one whole day on that or even more. Right. However, let's try to, to, you know, focus. I think we have to, for the situation overall, we have to face it that the global power struggle will continue. I see. And that NGOs and civil society will continue to face headwinds. You know, we don't need to, I wouldn't uh, go for, you know, doing as if it wasn't the case. I see. However, however, and this is important, the attempt to push the human rights off the global agenda has failed. Oh. And this is worth detailing. Okay. Because the argument that the human rights were supposedly only an invention of one part of the world has been proven wrong. We can register that as an important obstacle we have managed to uh, uh, take away. And why has it been proven wrong? Because blood is red all over the world. Human needs, humiliations, fears, joys, dignity, as well as suffering, is very much the same everywhere. Therefore, nobody, wherever we are, should either be excluded nor absolved from caring about human rights. So that is the reasoning why that argument, ah, it's somebody's view from over there, it's not us. Hey, it's not true. And we know it too well, especially we from civil society. Exactly. So my conclusion therefore is uh, in the near future, the, 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 the global scene for NGOs and civil society looks quite challenging. At the same time, more motivating because basic progress, you know, we are on the way to make basic progress. Exactly. And I, I, I agree with your points. And also I, I would like to add, uh, add some points. So we know that this COVID pandemic time uh, quite impacts NGO sector. It's to do with funding, finance, uh, lack of access to funds in these uh, difficult times when um, like literally companies are cutting their funds and they can't sponsor or, or provide donations to non local nonprofits the same happens with the governments and the same it happens with you know like individuals that um, like pr- that li- like they have family they have like need to pay for utility bills and bills you know and and they don't have that spare money you know to donate to nonprofit or somehow help and it's huge. It's very challenging time because um, those nonprofit organizations that work in different sectors provide very, very important support from the mental health to the like environmental conservation to anything that we would like to imagine. So, and seeing that that um, NGOs needs to face those uh, funding problems is very challenging and it's kind of going to change also the landscape of the future how do you see the role of ngos in the future and also um like the rest of you know if the ngo needs to go bankrupt because they just don't have funding it means we have one less uh, like 
group of uh, activists that uh, fight it for cause that they believe in. And it's very alarming. So that's what, what I feel. That's where, um, like, all these international organizations like United Nations or uh, European Union or any other uh, institutions or organizations need to step in and come up with, a, like, a, like solutions that really works not just on uh, they are nice uh, like written on the paper but really works in action so and right. that's, that's what i feel and i fear and it's 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 going to be interesting times uh, because one important thing that we can't forget that those people that work within ngos or within ngo sector or uh, fighting for something. They have their own families and they have their own like life. It, they are not like angels from the sky. They are the human beings and, and they also suffer. So and it, this is mm. very, very, yeah, very challenging. But what you outlined, it's, yeah, it's very important. And um, the future is, I believe, kind of, unpre- uh, we can't, we can kind of predict, but at the same time, we can't because um, we see every day something is changing, something is happening, you know, and, and, and that impacts the future. So thank you for uh, this uh, important point that you just shared. Right. I have actually a personal question to you. Um, working within NGO sector, um, personally, I, I used to deal with the people that don't believe in NGO sector or disagree with the way how NGOs work, or just you know they think the NGOs is just a waste of time. And mm. I have heard so many uh, bad comments when I was campaigning and uh, raising awareness of uh, international day for nonprofit and NGO uh, organizations that there's no needs uh, to have other international day, for, you know, there's no needs to right. um, raise awareness of nonprofit right. sector, you know, and that was, that was actually like back seven, eight years ago, obviously there were people that were very supportive and, uh, and I, I choose to st- you know, work with supportive people because I knew that there is there is importance. It's just you know, right. it's, I feel very sorry to see that people are very uneducated. But yeah, I wanted to ask you: Have you dealt with the people with you know with anger, people with anger, or uh, people who don't believe in NGO sector? Probably because since you are working within that. NGO conference and NGOs like environment ecosystem, you know, in Europe, you probably had so many ex- like experiences, or you know, and you would, I would be delighted if you can share some. Right. Yes. Uh, yes, I recall a person pouring out his anger against me. Mm. He assumed I was being paid just for saying nice things. Mm. And to him, that wasn't, that wasn't, you know, I was just a publicity maker of good things, but, but with other words, uh, fake, you know. I see. That was his impression. But actually, I was active as a volunteer. I see. And I should add, although he poured his anger against me for, you know, unfounded reasons, he actually came the next day and apologized for for his verbal assault. Wow. I I should say, I come from Switzerland, and and there is the mainstream of people who think you must earn well, etc. And if you don't earn well, uh, you know, you you are not... uh, Uh, part of the mainstream, so to speak. And of course, when volunteering, a lot of time goes there. And therefore, the, 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 how to say, one isn't in the middle bracket of incomes. Right. Yeah. So I was faced with that. And, uh, but it did interest me that he came to apologize, having realized he was a bit too, uh, how to say, 
unreflected. Yeah. Yeah. A, a bit too um, gut reactionary about me. Sensitive. <laughs> the lesson for me is that it showed how much our own integrity matters. Right. That's, a, that's what I took for me after this question. I see. He, in his view, I was a fake. All right. Therefore, that's what... therefore both voluntary NGO, civic society, all our sectors, we need to be sure and check our own integrity. Right. And it, it's not only a personal matter. Yes, it is personal, but it is also organizational. Right, I see what you mean. And and the increased respect we have recently gained in Strasbourg at the Council of Europe as a conference of international NGOs is precisely on that account. Mm. We have done on our own homework to be more efficient, to be, uh, if possible, crisis-proof, to have a leaner structure, and, and this has gained the respect of the institution. Mm. I say it's like or more trans respect to transparent be. as well. And that's and right, transparency. People can check what our rules are. Yeah. We have consulted the anti corruption body because there was an enormous problem in the parliamentary assembly, assembly under the title of Caviar Gate. Right. If people are interested in, in, <laughs> I got it. Things. Yeah, so yeah. So yes. Say coming back to the other point, people not believing in the NGO sector. I'm aware of two kinds, if you like. Okay. The one who wants to undermine the sec sector by creating the impression of being an NGO. I see. But in fact, they pursue quite different interests and aims. I and see. this is this I have personally seen. Hmm. A kind of subversion, if you like, in my view. Wow. Or, or camouflage or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. if you like. To behave as if, but actually you belong somewhere else. All right. It's could be also possible that what you're mentioning uh, that there is well I like raising awareness of World NGO Day I cross some non-profit organizations that are very well sponsored or funded by the corporations but then when you dig inside you see that the founders that created those non-profit organizations are those actually sponsors or co very connected close people but when you literally try to get them involved those non-profit organizations in action in course in in like like collaborative projects you know you just face that they are not interested because it doesn't meet within their agenda but that that agenda when you you know, read that agenda or, or check that agenda, you realize that there is no really uh, clear agenda. So, and that's what exactly means that, uh, and right. it, it's sad, but it happens in today's world. Right. And we saw there is like examples uh, actually in states where there were numbers of quite large number of nonprofit organizations that being used as a money laundering scheme and uh, I hope one day we will see a documentary about that on Netflix, <laughs> let's say. But it uh, would be interesting. But yes. it, it just shows that, um, like, and I believe that's why people feel fear, like angr angry at, at, at kind of at the NGO sector, because they kind of thought that the NGO sector is very, um, like, uh, important tool to, to protect or to take care of something you know but then they have this they they got this information that there is this ngos that you know uh, don't do anything they just receive funding and like or belong to cooperation or company and nothing is happening you know and, and that's 
how people create in their head that that kind of stories that NGOs are not important, you know, because they they just benefit, you know, from some some someone or something. But right. that's so wrong because, like, this is the same like in corporate world. We have comp- companies that uh, develop businesses. Okay, they bring money to the economy. They uh, create the jobs. The same like with the NGO sector. They also develop uh, courses that create jobs, you know, and bring right. uh, funds uh, funds to the economy. When we look to the corporate, well, there are also there are a number of uh, like uh, fraud companies, you know, that you know being established just to fund uh, money launder. But no one see that business sector as a uh, sector, you know, that you know how they see the NGO sector. That NGO sector is like we can't trust them. But what's interesting that little bit by little bit these things are changing and the attitude of, uh, especially if, when we talk about young generation, uh, they, their the attitude is changing to the, towards nonprofit and NGO sector. They see the nonprofit NGO sector is important role in uh, modern society. And I'm glad to see that because they see that they are uh, raising awareness of important issues that face today's modern society. And, um, and that's important to you know to face that and see that the, the slight change, the issues where we see with NGO sectors are, if I can say that, are either in the countries where really human rights doesn't exist, or the countries that uh, are new developed countries, you know, that are like pay attention on important things and NGO sector is just as an instrument to develop something but they are not really care the NGO sector could be as a uh, like important sector for your career or or for you know or you choose to work for NGO sector and mm. dedicate all your life like it could be if you look exactly modern Europe uh, like United Kingdom or Germany or states or Switzerland you know there's non-profit organizations that sustain very well and they have like offices and they provide jobs you know and they do amazing work you know for in within those fields and people literally um consider them to work for NGO sector not for business mm. sector so well yeah. yeah that's that's kind of interesting my kind of point of view yeah right um um yeah so basically angry people not angry people i want to ask you um have you like this, when we look to the that angriness? What do you think? Where that angriness comes from? Do you think it's personally? I feel it's about person's education. So how well educated is that person? Or also, secondly, to do with the mental health? Like, what's 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 would be your opinion when you th- see those people? when they are angry at NGO sector, do you think they are really angry at NGO sector or they're angry with their own lives, you know, and th- that's the way how they, you know, you know, show their emotions? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, going back to the example I mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, depending on the society, that is sort of a, a, a more or less a generalized view of what is okay. Right. And of what is not okay. Or or what is, you know, good and what is on the fringe. Right. So some some anger can come if that uh, idea of what is okay is being in some way questioned or possibly even challenged. Like I've had to learn in my context, sometimes when I open up a a dialogue, a conversation, I will say right away, uh, may I preface our meeting by saying, we are looking at a special case. Okay. From the outset, to to also to communicate, Mm -hmm. I understand 
we are lifting up something. Mm -hmm. Maybe sort of uh, uncovering would be saying too much, but sort of like pulling the curtain where right. we don't normally pull it. You see, Th that needs that. That is the, the what we can do. But but if it comes unawares. It can be a shock, and the response can be an anger. Wow, exactly. Or, so. or if you are faced with a crook, you know, an ill-intentioned person who, who whose how to say very existence yeah. would be challenged. Suppose we were putting things right in a certain sector. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel that's also to do with those individual mental health when um, the way, the perception, how they analyze information, how they understand things or situations, you know, and, and that's basically their um, personal reality creates their own personality and that personality starts to impact, you know, uh, or like uh, do that kind of, a way you know uh, like we talk about angriness you know to something or just disbelieves i don't believe that you know and maybe right. the, you know they don't not going to believe to anything you know that you're going right. to show you know because that's their personality because it's sort of a from, denial right exactly so and that's why that's where i feel like the young generation you know um, most of the young generation they kind of open their especially because they live in the today's modern world. There's so much information. Today's world is just about information, you know, and so social media kind of delivers some information, fake or not fake, but they deliver some information and then they get so much information, you know, uh, from the uh, media, from uh, friends, from, you know, like anything else where the, it was what they interact and um, that's how it's created their own view. But they see that because at the like their the short age, you know, they like see so much things are happening in the world. And as a young soul, they feel this is not right, you know. And that's why mm -hmm. um, they um, see they see the clear image who is really taking care of things. And that's why they see nonprofits or NGOs or movements that uh, literally takes like fights and takes care, you know, of things. And that's why they are so, so supportive. And that, that example we saw with the climate change march, you know, in the past two, few years, you know, when Greta went on the street, you know, and, and kids and young guys, you know, and girls went outside and fight for the future, you know. Of course, we can uh, discuss is this right format or is this correct way or is that message is, you know, going to impact or change. But the action, the action is very important that they have that passion and action and that's our future and that's a future of also uh ngo sector hopefully less angry people <laughs> around the ngo sector 